Hey folks, welcome back to Creator Side Income. This is a special Independence Day episode and it's my 20th earnings report since I started doing product reviews. All right, so first I wanna tell you just a little bit about me. I am a normal dude. I, I have a nine to five, I'm a school teacher. I've been teaching for over 20 years and I'm busy. I have four kids of my own and they keep me so busy. And so even though it's the summertime and we've been traveling quite a bit, I'm still waking up and I'm doing my job and I'm doing my side hustles. Over the summertime, I'm teaching three classes of summer school, but I'm doing them fully online, which gives me a lot of flexibility in my schedule. Uh, in addition to that, I have a number of projects I'm working on at the home as far as remodeling and adding to our yard and doing different things. And so I've got that honeydew list that keeps me busy over the summer. And then the most important thing is you know, with your kids, you only get 18 summers. And this is summer number 18 for us. And so we scheduled way too many things because my son will be moving away at the end of the summer. And we wanna make sure that we make as many memories as we can as a family. So it has been a busy summer. Now, last summer was my first summer full time, well, not full time, but I was doing product reviews and I was taking it seriously. And so I want to talk a little bit about that because Last summer, we didn't travel much. We didn't do a lot of things as a family. We called it our, our summer of financial independence or financial security, and we just worked really, really hard. I did overtime as a teacher. I took on a lot of extra classes, and then I was doing 20 to 30 hours a week of product reviews on top of that. And the result was we made a lot of money. In fact, we made more money last summer than I'd ever made in, a, in an entire year before. Like, we did really, really well over the summer, but, it meant that we weren't making memories, we weren't doing the things we kind of wanted to do. So this summer, we have switched things up a bit. We've tried to say no to work opportunities and say yes to family opportunities. And so that's kind of where I'm at. Now you see here on the slide, um, I'm doing summer school, I have those things, but I, I wanna talk a little bit about a money mindset because if we're gonna talk about an earnings report and we're gonna talk about, is this realistic for you? Is this realistic for people who are super busy? I want you to know where I'm coming from. Now, I grew up in a family that I, I was always cared for. We always had food on the table, but we didn't have a lot of extra things. And so from the age of 10 on up, I always had a part-time job. I did a paper route and then I got a job working at the hospital. And I've done a lot of things just so I could wear nice jeans and so I could drive a car and things like that. Um, then once I got off on my own, I decided to become a school teacher. And unfortunately, in this country right now, school teachers don't get paid very well. And so as we started, ha I got married and we started having children, even at the best salary I could get, we were at or below or maybe slightly above the poverty line for most of my working career. Now I'm here in my mid 40s and things have changed pretty dramatically in the last few years. I'll get into that in a minute. But I just want you to know that I'm not coming from a lot of money. I am coming from a, a deep work ethic and I think that's important. Now, I'm married 21 years um, to uh, someone who came from a similar money background. Uh, when it comes to money mindset, we always just did without things or made do instead of spending to make more money or even thinking that money could make money for us. Um, and so we're both DIYers. We fix things up. And what that has done for us is over the last 20 years, we've improved everything that we've had and in many cases been able to sell for more. So thinking specifically about real estate, our first home was a foreclosure. We fixed it up and sold it for more. Our second house was a, a, a kind of a torn apart rental unit that we got a really good deal. We fixed it up, refinanced. That's the house we're in now. Um, but we have a lot more value in that house. Uh, we have a rental that we fixed up. And we've been able to do some things just because we've learned how to work hard and do some things. Now, for the first 10 years of our marriage, it was a single income because my wife wanted to stay at home with our kids. We started having kids pretty quickly. And that was a decision we made together. But it meant that we had to get by on my teacher's salary, which was not enough. Then we went for after our kids were all into school, my wife started working part time. And that made a big difference for us. Now we were starting to invest a little more. But I should say, even when we were on a single income and we were in the, on the poverty line, we found a way to invest money for our future. 
we put money into stocks, we put into our retirement accounts, uh, we looked at real estate and we made improvements to our homes, even when we had very, very little. Once my wife started making a salary of her own, um, well, not a salary, having part-time working and making some money, that went mostly into real estate, just so we had a little bit of breathing room. And so what it meant is we started paying down uh, one of our mortgages a little faster. We did invest in a rental unit a few years ago, and my wife's income has kind of gone to paying off that rental, which has been really great. For just the last year, things have changed dramatically because product reviews took off for me and other side hustles started making really good money. And then my wife went full-time for the first time. Now that our kids are a little older, she's now working remotely, but working full-time. So we have more income and that has allowed us to do more with our money, take a little bit more risk, but also to do things as a family. Now, I just wanted to get out there. I know some of you are new to this channel. Those of you who aren't know most of that story anyways, but I think it's important because as we talk about this earnings report and we go through the different things that are making money, I'm now in a position where I might take a little bit more risk than I took when I was starting out. And so I'm gonna try to talk back to, you know, this is earnings report number 20. I'm gonna compare it to where I was at earnings report number one, okay? so. With our goals for this month, we looked at number one, professionally, I have to be 100% as a teacher. So my teaching comes before my side hustles. Uh, and so that's important. Number two, I already mentioned this is summer number 18. So it's spending as much time as we can with the kids. And then number three, do 50 reviews, but in only a few hours a week. I have found that now that I've done this for 20 months, I can be really efficient. And if you haven't watched my last couple of videos, I did a video where I talked about doing 50 reviews in a weekend of non-sponsored videos, things that I have lying around the house. I also have a video that actually I don't think I've published it yet. It'll probably be my next video on how to do sponsored videos and do a bunch of those in a weekend where I do eight, nine, 10 reviews in a weekend and get paid several hundred dollars up front to do those. Uh, so if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you should subscribe so you can see that one. Now, our other goal is to improve our earnings uh, templates for this video. I wanna get better at YouTube, so I'm trying new things. Uh, I tried using a template, uh, a PowerPoint last uh, earnings report, and it, it wasn't great, and so I'm trying to improve on it a little bit. So if you want to give me any feedback, I incorporated some of the feedback I got on my last earnings report. We'll see if maybe this one goes a little better. All right, let's look at our income sources right now. This is how we're making money with product reviews. Number one is TikTok. And I can say number one because I'm starting from lowest earner to highest earner. And TikTok, as you know, if you've been following my journey, is something that I'm not doing right now. So my goal is to make zero dollars this month on TikTok. However, I am thinking before I get to that, I am thinking that I want to do a little bit with TikTok moving forward. So in my goals for next month, I'm gonna talk a little bit about TikTok and that's why that's on this earnings report, even though I made nothing from it last month and don't even have an active account. The next one is something that was zero last month, but it has made a comeback. And so I set a goal on foreign storefronts on Amazon Influencer to make zero dollars, but we actually made some money this month and I'll talk about that in my goals for next month but if you're unfamiliar with foreign storefronts when you create an amazon influencer program or account you can do on-site commissions and by default you're going to do it from whatever country you're from but if you want to set up a storefront for canada for the uk for australia you can and you can upload your videos there as well you have to re-upload them to all the different storefronts now, if it's an English speaking storefront, that's not a problem. If you want to create a different video in a foreign language, you can do that to a foreign storefront. But I even tried uploading English videos to a foreign storefront, like I have some English speaking videos to a German storefront, and I haven't been dinged. There's nothing that I could see in the fine print that says you can't do that. So I tested it out just on a limited basis, and what I found is some of those videos got some traction. So um, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. In addition to the foreign storefront, you can do offsite commissions. That means any social media where you put a link to Amazon, that's gonna be offsite. For me, that's only YouTube. I don't do any other social media channels, but for YouTube, 
people can click on my links, go buy things on Amazon, and I can make a commission there. My goal for the month of June was to make $250 in that way. Uh, YouTube, again, you can direct people there, but people also can just watch your videos and you can make a commission from AdSense if you're monetized. If you have a thousand subscribers and over 4,000 hours uh, watch hours in the last year, then you qualify for the program. And I've been monetized for almost a year now. And my goal on AdSense was to make $450 in June. Then you can make money through sponsored videos. That means somebody is sending you a product and you're getting it for free. And if that's the case, if it's just free, you're not gonna make any money up front. But I now charge money, so somebody will send me a product, I'll charge them an upfront fee, so I'll post it to Amazon and to YouTube. They'll may pay me a commission, and then if it does well on YouTube and Amazon, I'll continue to make money through off-site and on-site commissions. So sponsored videos can be really good. However, most sponsored videos don't do as well for me as just the products lying around my house, and that's because I've become much more strategic in what products I buy to use in my everyday life. I'm buying things that are best sellers that need videos, and so my the videos I do on my own typically do better than my sponsored videos. However, I can make money up front, and my goal for the month of June was to make $500 in doing 15 videos um, that were sponsored. Finally, we've got Amazon Onsite. That's my big money maker. Uh, a year ago, I was starting to make a few thousand dollars a month. It kind of went down as the platform has become more saturated, so it's much more difficult to make money with the Amazon Influencer Program now than it was a year ago. However, I found that as long as I'm consistently uploading and doing more videos, I can make a few thousand dollars a month, and my goal for June was to make $4,000, which was about the same as I made in May, even though I've uploaded more videos, but I think with the saturation in the program, that was a very reasonable goal. If we add those all up, my total goal for the month of June as far as income was $5,200. Now, let's get into what worked and what didn't work. So let's start with TikTok again. TikTok, that goal was to not do anything. And what did I do? Nothing. <laughs> the result was I made no money. So that's all it was. But here's where it changes. Um, I, I do have a goal for TikTok for July, not to make any money, but I am going to start uh, getting followers. And I've done this with other social media platforms, with Instagram, with Twitter. And if all you do is find people in your audience, like if I'm doing product reviews, if I find other product reviewers or UGC creators, or maybe I'll find the brands that I've been reviewing products, and I follow a bunch of those, I find that a, a small percentage of those will follow me back. Now, historically, it would be anywhere from 10 to even up to 50%, depending on the niche. So if I followed 100 people in a day, maybe 10 would follow me back. And I kind of use that rule of thumb. So I figure on TikTok, if I can follow 100 to 200 people a day, then I can get 10 to 20 new followers every day. And within a few weeks or a few months, I can get up to that 1,000, 3,000, 5,000 follower count so that I can reapply to get into the TikTok shop program. So that's what I'm gonna try in July. I'm gonna try to follow 100 to 200 people a day. I think the maximum you can follow in a day is 200. And once you hit like 2,000 people you're following, then you have to unfollow some because it doesn't let you follow more than that without followers. And so I'm gonna experiment with that in July, see if I can at least get up to 1,000 followers on my account, and, and then we'll see maybe about getting back into the program. I think you need 5,000 followers now, um, so it might take me a few months. With foreign store friends, it turns out that in June I actually made some money so while my goal was to not do anything and I didn't upload any new videos to my foreign storefronts, I did actually make some money. So across, I have storefronts for the UK, for Australia, for Canada, and as I mentioned earlier, one for Germany. Now, the Australian one has never had a single click ever. So I have like 50 videos on there, it's never done anything. The Germany one started getting a few, the Canada started getting a few, and the UK. So they each made a few dollars, and this isn't a perfect um, conversion because 
it was measured in pounds and euros, but when you average everything out, it's pretty close to American money, at least for me. So I made about 50 bucks uh, last month. So for next month, I'm gonna try to upload some of my videos. Uh, I'll probably look for the ones that are the best sellers in those um, foreign markets and see if I can make a little bit more money there. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time with it because it's never been worth my time, but I think I'm gonna do at least a few. If I have some videos I'm reviewing anyways and they're big sellers, I'll go ahead and upload those to the foreign marketplaces. Now with offsite commissions, this is again, the, the YouTube directs people over to Amazon and if they make a purchase, you can make some money. They actually have a lot of incentives and rewards for that program, but I never qualify because I don't get enough traffic. Part of the reason for that is I don't make dedicated YouTube videos. I simply use my same videos that I make on Amazon Influencer and I put it on YouTube. Now, if I slightly change those and maybe at the end of my YouTube videos, I said, hey, if this video was helpful and you wanna buy the product, click on my link in the description. If that's all I did was add that to my YouTube videos, I think my conversion would be way higher. And so I've considered doing that, but I haven't done it yet. Um, this last video, I simply linked my YouTube videos like I do every month. Um, and the result was I made $208.47. That was $41 less than my goal. So that was disappointing. I don't have a lot of control over those sales, but as I did mention, I could change my videos and that might make a difference. My goal for this next month is just to continue to link. I'm not gonna make that change yet. I'm just not in a position where I want to spend the time to do that. I can do all my YouTube uploads in about an hour a week and I'm comfortable with that to make an extra $250 a month. I think an hour a week is very reasonable. So that's where I'm at for now. With YouTube, so let's talk about that. I actually threw this up because it's pretty cool to see. If you go back to August of last year's when I started and I started uploading all my videos and you see it grew quite a bit through last year and part of that's because I was uploading all my uh, archived videos but then also it was the holiday season and then as we got to this new year it plateaued right around oh $300 to $400. We kind of plateaued in December at about that $400 range and then we started seeing some more growth. So this was really exciting. My goal was $450 for this month. That would have been about the same as last month, which I was happy about because that was my best month ever. Uh, and I would do it simply by uploading my videos. Again, it takes about an hour a week. And it went better. I had my first $500 month, which was $85 over my goal. So I was really, really excited about that because you can see how consistent YouTube is here. As I continue to upload videos, I continue to make more money. So my hope is by the end of this year, especially as we get into that holiday season, I think I can make as much as $1,000 in one month from YouTube just doing what I've been doing. Now, I know I can do better. I know I can make more money. Uh, but just doing what I am doing in an hour a, a week, if I can get up to $1,000 a month, that would be awesome on YouTube. So my goal is just to continue to do the same stuff for now, okay? Finally, with sponsored videos, this is a category that I have a lot of back and forth on. Um, my goal was to make $500 this month in doing that in 15 videos, which would be about $30 a video, and I did that. I made 15 videos. I averaged $34 in commission per video, and I made $510, which was right at where my goal was. Now, I think I did one or two videos that I didn't get any commission. I had a few videos where I made like $70 or $75 commission, but the average was $34, which means most of my sponsored videos were $30 videos. Uh, what I have found is I have a bunch of people I work with that will send me products that I don't want or need, but, and they're really, really cheap. They're not gonna do great on Amazon. I'm not gonna make a lot of money on the back end. But I say yes to those people because they'll send me two or three products every single month and they're products that I can literally take out of the bag, show it on camera, just describe what it is, show it, do an unedited video that takes one minute and I make 30 bucks. For me, if I can do a handful of those every month, I'm getting money up front, it's guaranteed money, and I use that to reinvest into things, uh, to 
pay for things that I'll get on Amazon that I want for my family, but it's kind of a splurge item. And so that's where I do about half of my videos. The other half is sifting through emails and emails all the time. I get about 10 requests a day for reviews. And out of those 10, most of them, I would say nine out of the 10 will say, I'll send you this product in exchange for a video. So it's just a free thing. I'll email back and say, do you have a budget for reviews? I'm getting a lot of requests. I'm prioritizing paid reviews. Of, of those nine, I'll get about four or five to write back to say, yeah, I, we have a budget. I, and they'll usually say, I can pay you $10 or maybe $20. And then I'll counter with like, usually my set rate right now at least is $50. If they'll pay me $50 and it's something I can do relatively easily, I'll do it. Now, if it requires installation, it's gonna be at least $100. If they want the usage right so they can use my videos, then I'm not gonna make any money on Amazon, so I charge at least $150 for that. Um, and I don't get a lot of takers on those two. I don't do a lot of installations, I don't do a lot, or I don't give my videos to a lot of people. But what that means is, I'm doing about 15 videos a month. It's stuff that I mostly, uh, half of it is stuff I want, the other half is stuff I can easily just get rid of and I'm getting an extra 500 bucks a month. So that's pretty good for me. Um, I do feel like I'm spending probably too much time, two, three, maybe even four hours a week, just going through communication correspondence with sellers. And so when you add that to the time that it spends to do the videos, which I can do in three or four hours a week, now I'm spending upwards of 10 hours a week and getting $500. Um, that, of course, is not as good a return on investment as YouTube or as doing just non-sponsored videos. And so I've honestly considered giving up doing sponsored videos or raising my rates really high, but then you still have to sort through the, the emails and that's what's killing me. And so I've considered giving that up. The problem is I love getting free stuff. It's just really cool to get stuff all the time in the mail. And so at least for now, I'm trying to keep my rates relatively reasonable, um, but I'm seeing a lot of no's to just a few yeses. Finally, this is the bread and butter, Amazon on-site commissions. That means I do a video review, I put it on Amazon. If someone watches my video, or at least a certain percentage of my video, and then they purchase the product, I get a small commission for that. I love Amazon on-site. This is the Amazon Influencer Program because I don't have to drive traffic to their platform like I do from YouTube to Amazon or through the off-site commissions. On-site, it's people who are already shopping for that product, they've already searched for it, they just want some validation and so I show the product, I talk about my experience using the product and that seems to work really well. Historically, I've earned anywhere from, well when I started out a few hundred dollars a month in my first few months, once I got to about the 1,000 videos uploaded, then I was consistently earning a livable wage of three, four, five thousand dollars a month off those thousand videos. Of course, that goes up over the holidays and down during bad shopping seasons. But my goal for June was four thousand uh, dollars in on-site commissions. That was only a little bit more than what I made last June when I had six or seven hundred videos. Now I have about 1,700 videos, so I have 1,000 videos more than I did a year ago, but the, the program is saturated. There are so many people making videos right now, and Amazon has changed things. It's harder to see your videos because there's more placements. They're not showing, and, and for me, this made a huge difference. They're not doing related products anymore. So I used to have products that would show up, and then because similar products didn't have any videos at all, my video would show up for a similar product. People would use that video to make a buying decision and I'd still make a commission. That doesn't happen anymore and that definitely has impacted my earnings. And so $4,000 is a modest goal, but the idea here is I'm still uploading 50 videos a month. So that's my goal is to do 50. I did, what's that, 67 in June. So I hit my goal and my thought is I can do that in a few hours a week. I keep this very part-time so I can spend time with my family so I can be a great teacher and that, so I did what I was supposed to do the result was I got almost exactly what I was predicting uh, $4,061 so just a little bit above that goal 
And I'm pretty happy with that. I, of course, would love it to be a shopping season. Uh, November, December were in incredible. Uh, and I hope that, you know, I'm going to have over 2,000 videos this holiday season. And I hope that it will s skyrocket. But I don't know. Honestly, I, it's just I'm making about a third of what I made per video versus where I was at a year ago. So you have to work a lot harder now to get the same kind of income. Um, my goal for July is the same, 15 sponsored videos, uh, 50 non-sponsored. And I'm gonna do a lot of those because we're traveling a lot throughout the month of July. And so I'm gonna do Airbnbs. And, and that just means when I go into a new place, I'm gonna look for things that I can review that I haven't reviewed from my own house. It's still things that I'm using in the Airbnb. Uh, but I'm going to take a few hours on vacation to go around to the different Airbnbs we have. I think we're going to do two or three this month. And that will be really great to get some new videos on and hopefully some high ticket items that are selling really well. But you do what you can do there, right? So in total, my goal was to make $5,200 this month with all the different income streams. You see I have six income streams. Two of them I wasn't counting on for anything, uh, but the others, if we add them up, $5,200. I do like that the Amazon on-site is not the full pie anymore. We're making pretty significant money from YouTube. $500 a month can be life-changing for people. $500 a month from sponsored. Uh, getting that Amazon off-site to go up, and it, again, that's mostly from YouTube, but we're working on that. And if we continue to look at TikTok and foreign, store for, foreign storefronts, that can be a lot of money that adds up. My goals for, oh, look, I did this. <laughs> I forgot I made this animation. So did I do my TikTok goal? Yes. Did I make my Amazon storefronts? Yes. Did I do offsite? I did it, but I didn't quite make what I wanted. All that means to you is I'm getting really good at predicting income based off the data I have. I have a bunch of different spreadsheets where I track all this. So when I tell you about my results, I want you to believe me because I'm tracking everything. And so um, I was a little off on that. Now I'll incorporate that as I look forward to make goals for the future. YouTube, I hit my goal. Sponsored, I hit my goal. Offsite or onsite, I hit my goal. So total for the month, that goal is $5,200. I made $5,368. So 53.68 for the month of June, that's pretty good. That's a livable wage. For me, it's all gravy because I still have a, a teaching salary over the summer. I actually make more because I'm doing overtime with teaching extra classes. So the summer months are really good for our family. What that means is I'm saving more than usual, especially with it, the political situation right now. I wanna make sure that we're cash heavy so that if the economy tumbles, we can make investments. Uh, if the real estate market tumbles, we can buy another rental. And so we're putting a lot of money into paying down debts right now and a lot of money into saving up cash right now. And so we're doing that in a bunch of different ways. I'm not going to talk about it all here today, but just know that, you know, a lot of this money that I'm earning, while some of it is going into going on vacations and we've gone some incredible places, some of it is going into upgrading our lifestyle through home improvement projects and even purchases that will Im increase our lifestyle, um, most of our money is going into savings. And I love that because it means that I'm gonna be financially free within just a few years. Uh, we're almost completely out of debt and we can have that done, including our, our primary mortgage and all student loan debts and things like that. We're, we're on track to be out of debt in the next few years and it's a great feeling. It's a great feeling knowing that we have other investments that are working for us that can replace my income. And so there's gonna be a day where we're financially independent, where I don't have to work anymore. I don't think it's gonna change much for me because I like what I'm doing, but that is some great peace of mind. So 53.6850, that's what we made in June. Let's look at July. Um, I compare always my earnings this time of the year to my earnings last time of the year. And I, I benchmark that against how many videos I've done created. That helps me make predictions. Last July, there was a prime day and we did see a boost in sales because of those prime days at the end of the month. For me, it meant a jump from about $4,000 to about $6,000 last year. Um, and that's why I have an asterisk here. My hoped earnings on 50 videos for July 
is going to take me from about four thousand dollars in june to about five thousand in july and the reason it's five thousand instead of six thousand is because there's more competition on the platform there are more things that are keeping those earnings down and I, that's just the trends that I've seen. So I'm, I'm hoping for 5,000. If I get more than that, great, but I'm not expecting more than that. With YouTube, I'd love to have another $500 a month. I think that's very doable um, just by continuing to do what I've been doing. Offside, I wanna get up a little bit to 250. I want that to grow more, but I'm just not doing enough work in that regards. With the foreign storefront, now that it's there again, I'm hoping for another 50 bucks, but I'm only gonna upload a few videos there. And with sponsored, I wanna keep seeing that creep up. I wanna be able to charge a little bit more for the products that I want. And so while I made 510 last month on 15 videos, this month, if I do 15 videos, I wanna make 525. Now, if you add those all together, um, that would result in me earning $6,300, which is actually less than I earned a year ago with less than half the videos I have now. So that's unfortunate for those of us in the program and those of you who are just starting in the program. Um, it's harder to make money, but $7,000 after working at this part-time for a year and a half, that's amazing. Like, I, I hope that's motivating to you, thinking that if you do the things I recommend you do in these videos on this channel, you could probably get there a lot faster than I could. You could get a lot of videos reviewed, you could do a lot of work, and you could make a lot of money. So it's really exciting to look at that moving forward. And that's where we'll end this video. What questions, comments do you have for me? Drop those in the comment section. I'm using those comment sections uh, to determine what I should make videos of in the future and what kind of data I should look at so I can be really helpful for you. So let me know what questions you have. I am going to do a few more videos uh, this month that talk about my process of doing sponsored videos, of working with other people, uh, doing collaborations, and, uh, and then I'll have a few other side income videos that I'll, I'll get out this month as well. So really excited to continue to produce these for you. It's a lot of work for me, obviously, and I'm not getting a ton of, uh, actually, I'm not getting anything out of this monetarily for this YouTube yet, but one day I hope to monetize and I, so that it can help my family as well. But right now it's just me giving you as much as I can because I want anyone who's willing to work hard should be able to make a lot of money. I think that's the great thing about being an American. Here it is, Independence Day weekend, and I'm so grateful that we live in a capitalistic society where if you work hard and if you work smart, uh, you can be rewarded for that. So what a blessing to be an American. Uh, I'll talk to you again soon, bye-bye.